At 6.05 p.m. August 1, 2007, disaster struck. In less than a minute, the I-35W bridge spanning the Mississippi River in Minneapolis, Minnesota, was reduced to rubble, claiming the lives of 13 people. Soon after the collapse, people across the nation were asking, how could this have happened? How could a bridge that stood for 40 years simply collapse in a country with as many resources as the United States? Completed in 1967 by Industrial Construction Company and Huracan Incorporated from designs by Spendrup and Parcel, the I-35W bridge was, in its entirety, over 1,900 feet long. It consisted of 14 spans, five south approach spans, three main spans, and six north approach spans. The three main spans were of deck truss construction, where structural steel trusses support an upper roadway deck, while all but two of the approach spans were steel multi-girder construction, with the remaining two approach spans being concrete slab construction. The center span of the bridge consisted of a single 458-foot steel arched truss with two support piers located on the north and south river banks. Each support pier had two load-bearing concrete pylons at either side, capped with roller bearings that allowed the bridge some flexibility due to changing conditions. The center span rested on these bearings and was connected to the north and south approaches by shorter spans formed by the same main trusses. These spans were both 266 feet in length and were connected to the approach spans by a 38-foot cantilever. The truss system consisted of the main trusses, the transverse deck beams, deck stringers, and finally the reinforced concrete roadway deck itself. The deck was 113 feet wide, divided in the center, and had transverse expansion joints at the centers and ends of each of the three main spans. The roadway deck was approximately 115 feet above the river. While an ongoing investigation is still searching for the actual cause or causes of the bridge collapse, there is a great deal of information of the state of the bridge prior to the collapse and potential contributing factors. As early as 1990, the bridge was rated as structurally deficient by the U.S. Department of Transportation due to corrosion on the roller bearings preventing movement. By 1993, inspections were increased from once every two years to every year as corrosion was found in the steel forming some of the bridge joints and fatigue cracks were discovered in the bridge approach spans. In 2001, an independent study by the University of Minnesota Engineers again deemed the bridge structurally deficient, but not in need of immediate replacement. Their research showed that fatigue cracking in the deck truss had not occurred and was not likely. However, they had noted many poor fatigue details on the main truss system. The most recent study, conducted by the consulting firm URS in 2006, recommended that 52 beams be reinforced by bolting on additional steel plates, only to state in a January 2000 supplement that the drilling required to install the plates could significantly weaken the bridge. They suggested further inspections, but echoed many previous inspectors in saying that visual inspection would miss as much as 90% of fatigue cracks due to access issues and debris such as bird droppings. The other area of concern was the road deck resting atop the aging truss superstructure. If the road deck had taken on a significant amount of the bridge's overall stress due to the weakening of the truss system, then any stresses on the deck become multiplied. Construction was ongoing at the time of collapse, with road crews resurfacing four of the bridge's eight lanes. It is still unknown as to what the load was at the time and how this difference in load affected the bridge. The concrete resurfacing done to the I-35W bridge generally removed and replaced only two inches of the nine-inch slab, but in some areas required complete concrete replacement. Removing sections could almost be as damaging as removing a support truss. Whatever the ultimate cause or causes may be, information gathered from the collapse will be used to educate architects, engineers, and politicians to help prevent future disasters.